I've had this question quite a few times and I always stumble with it a little bit because it was there was multiple um, inspirations. Part of it is um, a little bit based on my family or I guess my, I should say my dad and myself, um, just little hints of it, but it's sort of, I wrote this as sort of a, a, a nod or an ode to my father. Um, but then it was to, really, when I write plays, everything that I've ever written has always come from an image rather than an idea. So the image that I had, and I don't know why, and this is going to sound grim, but I, I imagined an old man in his 70s mopping a floor in a prep room at a funeral home. And I know it just sounds like, but I just thought, what is that life? What does he go home to do? What do, and it was this idea that being around death um, every day, how that would change somebody. Believe it or not, this is a comedy. <laughs> um, but the, that was sort of one of the, the first image that I had. And then I just built this story around this old man that works, this aging man that was working in a, as a custodian in a funeral home. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> To elaborate on that, then how would you describe your writing style? Do you have a skeleton or you said it was an image, but can you give yeah, well, me I, well, I So I, my style is I think that whenever I sit down to write something, I have ideas and I have themes that I, that start to come out, but they come out organically. Like I never sit down and say, no, I want to write a play about isolation, which is essentially one of the themes in, in this play. It just becomes about what it what it, it develops into but I usually have like ideas about something that I want like a, a, a dialogue or something that I think would be funny or and I build the story around sort of humorous situations or offbeat situations and see how it grows and uh, to be honest my first drafts are always just horrible <laughs> like just god awful I mean I write a lot a lot of drafts so it's a uh, it takes a lot of drafting a lot of rewriting a lot of hearing the play um, with actors and a lot of development before it becomes what it is on opening night. No. Well, I, I, when I first read the play, um, I thought, well, this is sort of a set designer's dream play. <laughs> um, it's a house in Buffalo that is a hoarder's house. So um, there's so many uh, things that could be done with that. But um, after talking to the director and to Natalie, they were like, this is sort of, they kept saying the word sitcom. And I and I loved sitcoms growing up. And so I started looking at all the old sitcom sets that were mm -hmm. something that was comforting and something I knew. Um, so All in the Family and Roseanne and Dick Van Dyke Show and all these things that, and I thought, well, what if they took that structure and built it into filling it up with all the stuff that these people loved? And that sort of how I kind of approach the play. And so there's little elements, little nods to sitcom sets all over the place. And then what was interesting about the play for me was it starts off as this place that's full of stuff, but by the end of the play, it has to be sort of empty. So then it was like, what is this shell that's left behind? And I love the idea that it was these little pieces of our history and on television, but also the people, the history of these people in the house. I uh, I don't enjoy acting. <laughs> um, I found out very quickly. And um, I always wanted to be part of theater. And I loved drawing when I was a kid. So um, I actually stumbled onto it the first time I did it. Someone said, oh, our set designer dropped out. Can you draw something up for us? And I did that. And I thought, this is a great way for me to stay involved. And then I realized as I was getting educated that it's about creating the world of the play. So I get to create all these fantastical worlds or realistic worlds or ideas, take a, somebody else's idea and make it my own, but then give it back to them. And I love it when somebody says to me, oh, I would have never thought of that. That's so much better than what I thought of. Um, so, and it's, it's my way of just becoming and staying involved in the theater and, and creating places that just exist in my imagination, which is mm -hmm. kind of great. Gosh, you know, it, I was, I'm an actress, so I've been sort of telling stories through that lens for my whole life. Um, I got started acting when I was really little. So I've been, and I've also been exposed, I was around the theater a lot when I was a little girl. So I've always loved storytelling in this form 
there's something I think Oscar Wilde said it's the most immediate to art form because it tells us what it it's like to be human. There's just that connection with that. What there's something about live theater that is so different than movies or television because you're right in the room with people telling these stories, and I just feel like it's like holds a mirror up to us, and we get to see like experience humanity. It's just a theater's always been very magical for me. So I started writing my first play. I wrote not with any intention of it being produced. It was actually just something that I did as a um, kind of a love letter to my old female friends. Um, and it's told through letters and it, and it's ended up being the most um, produced of my plays it just out of production in Germany in German. Um, so it's my first play was just sort of, I'm just going to do this on, on a whim and see, cause I love telling, I love the theater and I want to try to write one. And then I got hooked. And since then I've written, well, three more since then. So, and I hope to write, write more. I, absolutely love the whole community of theater and this way of expressing myself and telling stories this way. How you know, I don't, I, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I right now um, don't feel the need or the urge to write about um, the pandemic or about what I've gone through or because I feel like I want a little bit of distance from it. Mm -hmm. I almost want to live in an, another reality or another um, made up world. So, but interestingly, this play is about a, a woman um, who is isolated and who's agoraphobic and who is doesn't want to leave her house and is in her forties and barely leaves the house because she doesn't, she's afraid of what's out there. So, and her father is trying to push her out into the world and wants to encourage her to live her life and to connect with other people and to laugh and to heal through laughter and connection. So it's very interesting and almost eerie that we're going to be, people will be seeing a play that almost foreshadowed what happens happened to everybody during this pandemic. In some way or another, we all experienced isolation and loneliness and grief. And so that's what all of these characters are going through. And then to have it be a comedy about this is sort of, it's almost like it was, it's almost like I wrote it on purpose or I knew it was half coming. <laughs> Oh, I was thrilled, really thrilled. I had been developing the play with um, American Stage, so I had had a few readings here. Uh, and then it was selected for the um, 21st Century Voices New Play Festival and then was the main selection from that year. And it was, it's thrilling. I mean, it's a playwright's dream. We, I mean, it's, it's hard to get produced. There's a lot of people writing plays and not many theaters. And so it, it's a really a dream come true and to be working with this team here and this director who I've know very well and I've worked with as an actress before and it's really been um it, it well it was a dream come true and then this pandemic hit and it became <laughs> a whole other it became very sad it was really tough to go through that sort of we almost got there and then we had to shut down it was a really, really sad day. I think this play um, speaks to the idea of how we protect ourselves mm -hmm. and why protection can be good and protection can be bad. Mm -hmm. um, and as a set designer, you know, this idea of them surrounding themselves with stuff that was sort of their armor. Mm -hmm. And if nobody wants to come into my house because it looks like this, then I'm protected from people. And then when the outside world actually intrudes um, that how these people react in multiple different ways and multiple different outcomes, but how they survive this idea of not being alone anymore. And I think that the, the characters, what I found most interesting about this play is the characters are so well drawn and so well written that I knew exactly who they were the moment I read it. And then seeing the actors take them further and with the director, it is just, it's really been fun to watch the whole thing progress into real people living in my realistic, absolutely realistic <laughs> set um, of, you know, it, and people, the people's reaction when they walk in and see the set, because it's so, in a weird way, it's horrific to look at this world. <laughs> But then it's so interesting to really look at this world and, and kind of uh, go, oh, look, did you see that over there? Oh, look, did you see that over there? 
And so, and that this, so these, this world that these people have created has, is really interesting to look at. It's almost like, it, in a weird way, it was like making little art exhibits all yeah. over the house. So when you look at, you know, we were just talking about the dishwasher is full of shoes, but they're all like organized in the dishwasher. <laughs> so it made sense to these people. And so that's sort of the fun of being a set designer is you get to go into the minds of these characters who create this world. And that's what we hope we do. Oh boy, I, I you know, it's so interesting because I think it, it resonates more now than it did 18 months ago when we shut down. Uh, that connection, human connection and laughter um, are healing. And it also, I think it's, it's, it has a universal, um, this theme in it is so universal to, to, we, to everybody right now of loneliness and how we protect ourselves and then how we need to heal and how we need to connect and also how we wanna help the people that we love heal because there's this idea or this theme in the play of the father, this older man wanting to make sure his daughter is okay if he leaves this earth because he's so worried about her. So I think it's just, it's really, I said it, uh, when we rehearsed this play 18 months ago, I said to, to the director during one of our rehearsals, I said, this play is a little bit simple. It's about kindness and love and laughter. And I said, please make it help me, Chris. Like it has to be about something more than that, right? And when we started to dissect it, he really discovered that it's a play about wanting to be seen. And I thought, what an interesting thing that it's is how so many people we out there, we pass them on the street every day and they might sort of, and I, I say this in a way like just be a someone that we don't notice every day. And then now you might look at somebody differently and think, you know what, they have a story to tell. Everybody has a story. And so I think that that's that sort of universal feeling that we all want to tell our story no matter who we are. Mm. Oh. Well, I... <laughs> I say love, loss, and laughter. I would say poignant, funny, and brave. <laughs> Those are good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I think it's such a, got such a, I, I don't know, I just, after all of this time when we've all been indoors and or we've all had to experience entertainment in different ways, whether it be outdoor theater, outdoor events or watching television, it's, it's just people to experience this, this play together, I think is going to be very cathartic for, for an audience. Yes, yes. I think it's, you know, the, the, I think the play is going to be viewed in a different lens now mm -hmm. because we've all yeah. been similarly involved the way the characters are and mm -hmm. isolated so I think I think audiences are going to see it in a different light but I don't, only think that makes the play stronger mm -hmm. well you know what I, I have something I always think about theater when I or even or a movie any sto or book stories I, I always want people when they leave this is what I personally want when I write something and when I see something I know the play or the movie or the book has succeeded if I walk away still asking questions and wanting to know, know those characters in an even deeper level and wanting to like, you know, where they stay with me. There's some plays that I'll see in five minutes later or the next day. I don't, I might remember what the story is about, but I don't really think much about the characters. Mm -hmm. And I really, as a playwright, I, I don't try to do it, but I hope that people walk out and maybe even a few days later thinking about the people that they just saw on that, that those characters that they spent that those two hours with and that there's they're still with them in some way I just feel like that's that's what I I love as a theater patron and as a writer I'm always I want to try that I'm going for it I always find it interesting when I do a set that people are really like that people are always like oh your set was great your set was great but what I want to hear is that play was great you know, because mm -hmm. we're all part of this. Yeah. 
Um, and our, people are always confused by that. Well, you don't want people telling you how great your set is. Of course, I want people to tell me how great my set is, but I don't want them <laughs> to get lost in the set because the whole idea of the set there is to support the play. Um, so when they walk away and they're going, that was just an amazing story on every level. That's what I love to hear. Oh, gosh. You know, I, I say, I know this is like maybe, you know, cliche, but just go for it. Uh, one of the things that I, as a playwright, have experienced a little bit of is I censor myself at times um, because I feel like, oh, gosh, if I write that, I'm going to offend somebody or somebody's going to, be, you know, be triggered by it. It's very hard, especially when you write comedy, to write without censoring yourself. And I think playwrights right now, some of the playwrights I know are doing a little bit of that because we don't want to be insensitive. Um, so it's a little hard sometimes to tell truthful stories if you can't say it with truth. So I, I just, I think that people should write with everything, put it on the paper and also write what scares you. I, I, a playwright once said that and I thought, wow, that's so great. Instead of what you know, write what scares you. And I, I usually write about those things. Like in this case, isolation scares me. So I, I ended up writing about that. So that's, yeah. No, don't write what you know, write what scares you. The, oh boy, welcome back to the theater. <laughs> see a play, Come see a play. <laughs> Come to laugh yeah. at the theater. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy to be presenting with this team and these actors presenting a comedy. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, as Scott said, it's a bittersweet comedy and it's, there's a lot of darkness in it, but it's, it's definitely a comedy. I mean, there should be, if we do our job, a lot of laughter. Do you want to be featured on Behind the Curtain? Email Deb Kelly at BehindTheCurtainTampa at gmail.com to schedule your interview.